In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own craters with XPS foam for around 30 bucks Canadian, provided you have some basic hobbying tools kicking around your house. So first off, I just want to thank everyone who's shown interest in our content. We're just starting out and we feel like we have a lot to show. So thanks. And that actually brings me to the point of this video and really the purpose of this channel. You see, I, f I feel like most of us in life really don't have a clue what they're doing. And we look up to people who do. But the funny thing is, is that people who look like they know what they're doing actually don't. They just kind of act like they do. At least that's been my experience. And that's where you hear the fake it till you make it expression. And when I say they act like they do, I mean they have a confidence about them that allows them to push through the hurdles we wish we could do ourselves. And I'm trying to learn that. That confidence and courage is a skill that has to be learned. And by doing this terrain project and sitting in front of my computer editing and talking to you, I'm learning those skills. And that feels good. But anyway, I digress. It's a whole other topic that deserves discussion. But essentially with this video, you're going to see me pretend to teach you something I've done for literally the second time. And try to make it look like I know what I'm talking about. But actually I don't. And that's okay. I don't. <laughs> that's the point. We all learn and improve off of one another. There are always things we are scared to try or explore. I'm just a guy with a camera and a passion for creating. And obviously Warhammer 40k because it's the greatest sci-fi to have ever existed. Am I right? So with that being said, let's watch me try and recreate a few pieces of terrain so we can try and sell that 40k feeling that we all love better in our games of 40k. So, these in my opinion function better than most other craters on the market that you can purchase online. If you use the right materials to blend them into your map, it really helps sell the world you're trying to create with your games of 40k. You can kind of see what I mean here. I have some uh, examples of the first batch I made with some red shale kind of uh, exploding out as if the crater had just been made. and it, the edges seamlessly blend into the map, at least in my opinion, and I think it looks really good. And uh, if you like the map that you just saw, that was actually from the first battle reports we ever filmed, and uh, I'll throw a link up on somewhere on the screen, so if you want to check it out, you can check it out. So if you're actually wondering what uh, those original sets of craters are made out of in terms of the rock materials it's actually uh, red shale you can find this stuff in your baseball diamonds I don't know where you're from and if you have baseball diamonds around you but uh, here in Canada we got plenty believe it or not it's not just winter and hockey 24 7 up here <laughs> contrary to popular belief so I guess the first step is pick a battle mat that you really like that you want to put these craters onto. And you need to look at the colors, the textures, and then you need to start thinking about what kind of rock material you can use to blend it into your map. For me, I had that moon map, I'll put a link in the description, that uh, I'm looking to make craters for. So I knew I needed something with grayish tones and going for like moon rock kind of so I have these old tiles kicking around and I'm not about to go out and buy material when I can make stuff for, for free call me cheap but hey I figured this would be fun cuz uh, get to take some aggression out and make some free material so let's get to it As always, safety first. Don't want any rock chips flying into my eye. <laughs> Look at me. What a goon. <laughs> oh man, the amount of time I spent smashing these tiles into bits. <laughs> I 
and as you can see the amount of dust kicking up it's probably not good for my lungs but uh, I'll get wise here in a second uh, I decide to cave and get a, a mask on and be a smart boy all right man take out some aggression So, as you can see there, that's kind of the texture I'm going for, and if you're not willing to obviously make your own material, but if you're willing to buy or look around just on a hike or just when you're walking around your town or city or whatever, and you find material, I find that size and texture is generally what I'm looking for when I'm blending my craters into my map. And of course, I made a huge mess. I think I actually ended up pounding rock for about two and a half hours and this is all I got out of that. It's some pretty good stuff though, like it's exactly the texture I want. It's pretty fine grade. It's got some pretty good chunk sizes in there. It's kind of exactly what I'm looking for, so I'm pretty happy. However, I did destroy one of my containers, as you can see there, I busted through the other side, so I'll have to repurpose this. So once you've got your rock material selected, you're going to need a 2 foot by 2 foot heavy chipboard square, some Gorilla Glue construction adhesive, your hobbying tools, and some acrylic paint to paint it to whatever color you like. And of course, XPS foam. That's the main uh, price point of this build. Uh, for my hardware store, it was 30 bucks, and uh, this chipboard is pretty cheap. So all in all, this build is pretty cheap, provided you have the rest of the stuff handy. So yeah, there's me uh, telling future me that that is indeed two feet. I'm glad I'm looking out for myself. So you're gonna wanna grab your X-Acto knife and then just as best as you can, line up the XPS with the heavy chipboard and cut it as squarely as you can. Alright, now that you got your XPS foam cut, you're ready to glue it to your heavy chipboard. And I'm using Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. I find this stuff really works really well. It dries quick, holds strong, I haven't had any problems with it. Okay, so before you set her down, try and line it up as squarely as you can. And that looks pretty dang good. Not bad from that angle, eh? So of course you're going to want to uh, gently massage your XPS foam, give it a nice back rub. This is going to help the uh, construction adhesive bind to the XPS foam, so I recommend it. Of course you don't have to, but I'm a nice guy. So at this point you can probably see how this project is coming together. Essentially, you just use this square as your canvas and 
you draw the creators out of your imagination. You know, you can do those two creator sets or one big creator, some little ones. It's really up to you. Use your imagination. That's where all the fun is. So, I know that I really like this big one in my uh, games of 40k that I've played so far, so I definitely want one the same size as this, so I'm just going to go ahead and trace that, but the first time I just use some circular objects that I had kicking around my house. I mean, you can use a protractor, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't need to be perfect, you know, just, just get a general shape, like, grab a plate, a lid of a bucket, whatever works, you know? So the next step is going to be to cut your craters out of their tracings. And I realize I do have an advantage here. I have the luxury of having this bandsaw, which is pretty handy. But uh, you can use a box cutter. It's just going to take you a little longer and a little bit more force. But you know, if you have the power tools, use them, right? Work smarter, not harder. really enjoyed this step of the hobby build. I find using this thing is quite uh, mesmerizing. You kind of get into like a little trance, which is <laughs> could be quite dangerous really if you're not paying attention to where your hands are, I just realized. So keep that in mind. When you're having fun, sometimes you're not paying attention. So stay vigilant. All right, now that we've got all our craters cut out, we're ready to move on to the next step. So this process is pretty similar to the previous tracing step. You're just gonna wanna find some discs or round things in your house. Like I said, you can get technical with a protractor or you can just find smaller circles that will fit inside of your uh, craters. For instance, like I'm using a, a grinder blade there. Well, whatever you end up using, just make sure that the size of the circle is smaller than the base size, because that's what's gonna make the most sense for constructing our craters down the line. And once you're happy with the size relative to the base, go ahead and trace that out. The reason we're doing this is because we have to build a slope from the edge of the crater detonation down to the base of the chipboard, and that's what's going to give us the most natural effect. And here I'm just marking the crater that, if you think about the detonation of these artillery shells naturally, you also have to consider the time at which they detonated. So I marked the one I wanted to be detonated last. So essentially that circle will be overlapping the other two. So that's just a mental note for myself in the future. So now that that's done, I'm just gonna slide over my hobby and crate here. Looking for my scalpel kit. There it is. Perfect. You're gonna need your hobby scalpel here. It's gonna be handy carving out some of the details into the craters. If you don't have one, 
You can still use your exacto uh, knife or box cutter. That'll work just fine. So the basic idea here is to carve a cross hatch in the interior of your crater. And the reason we're doing this is that we're essentially creating little tiny cubes that can be popped out easily with a prying tool. Okay, so once you've got that finished, I'm just using these woodworking tools here. I'm sure you could use anything you can think of to pry these suckers out. You could use your hands, a knife, whatever you can think of. I'm just using what makes the most sense to me. However, you're gonna to wanna to start from the center outwards because you wanna leave a little bit of the edges still left because you, you wanna blend the edges down to the base of the crater. You don't want a sharp line. So try your best to avoid taking away directly against the line. Something like that. That's good. And then when you get to this stage, you're going to want to try and carve away a slope, but kind of looking for a natural effect. You don't want to do too much, too little, you know, leave some chunks there, take some more out here. Just kind of do what comes to your mind. That's what I do. I just kind of go with the flow. That's half the fun of doing this project anyway. It's just kind of letting your imagination tell you what you think should look good. Okay, so once you have that slope carved out, then you can go in with a finer cutting tool and trim away that edge that was traced out. But you're gonna to wanna to go on like a 45 degree slant. And that's gonna be the edge of your crater rim. Here I'm just getting rid of the uh, Gorilla Cement that hadn't finished drying yet. Because in all these years, I still haven't learned what patience is. Oh yeah, this was a pretty scary moment. My X-Acto knife exploded, it snapped. Luckily it didn't hit me in the eye or the face because I definitely wasn't wearing safety glasses. Dodged a bullet there. So the next step is to cut along the edges of the outside of your crater. But the way you're gonna go about doing this is you're gonna apply it a little bit of pressure at the top and by the time you get to the bottom of the chipboard, you want to apply a lot. So essentially, you're halfway cutting it on a 45 degree angle. And that's going to help you build your slope. Because the next step is to cut into the side of that, as you'll see here in a sec. Just like that. You're going to go along your crater on a 45 degree slant down the middle. And you're just gonna follow that all the way around. Change your blades when you need to. It's gonna make your life a heck of a lot easier. And it's just safer too. This XPS stuff can be kind of tricky to cut sometimes. But as you can see there, I have a cut going down about as close as you can get, but not too close to the edge of the chipboard. And you're going to want to cut all the way around on the side. And then the next step here is to use your thumbs now that you've made your cuts and you're just going to pry out all these chunks nice and easy. Oops, <laughs> looks like I took away too much there. Must have cut too deep. But hey, that's okay. Mistakes happen. 
and in a later step in this build, we can fix that no problem. Not the end of the world. In the famous words of Bob Ross, there are no mistakes, only happy little accidents. Remember that. So at this point, you really want to be thinking about functionality versus aesthetic. Personally, I'll always choose the rule of cool over, you know, tabletop functionality. I'm just uh, trimming the edge of my crater a bit more just because I don't think that wide edge looks realistic to me. Uh, but hey, if you're all about having your models play and function easier, that wide edge on the crater rim will definitely support bases better than that skinny little edge I just cut. And that's just kind of the fun of this project, right? You just improvise as you go, you know, just do whatever comes to your gut. Always trust your gut. Here I'm just trimming the edges a bit more. Just trying to create a more flush slope between the battle mat and the edge of the crater. It really doesn't matter too much because like I said, we'll be blending these craters in with rock material anyway, so you won't really even see the edge of the crater, but it helps. I will admit, when I first did these, this part was a bit discouraging because I didn't know how they'd turn out. But having done this once before and seeing the final product, I know that I can recreate it and I'm pretty happy with how they look. It's hard to believe that that turns into that. Pretty neat. Oh yeah, and uh, if you end up doing this, make sure if you don't have a garage or something, you at least lay some paper towel down or newsprint just so you don't make a huge mess, because it is messy. It's always nice to see how a project evolves over time. You know, starting out, it's really hard to realize how these basic materials can slowly morph into something that's just sitting in your head as a picture or an idea. I know when I started my original set of creators, I was really nervous that they turn out crap and it'd be a huge waste of time. But doing this project really helped me realize that, you know, we're pretty capable. You just, there's just silly little thoughts in our heads that just tell us we can't do it for some reason. But just give it your best shot and I think you would honestly be surprised about what you can come up with. So for this next step, you're going to want to grab some spackle. You can find this in any hardware store. And this is honestly my favorite step because you get to fix all the gross cut marks and chip marks that don't look good right now. And it kind of reminds me of being a kid, honestly, playing with mud. It's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Other important thing. You're going to need a bowl of warm water. This is going to help you not use as much spackle it's gonna spread it a long ways. And I have to give credit where due. I've been watching a lot of Eric's hobby workshop. I'll put a link to his account in the description. He's a great hobbyist. He honestly probably gave me the most inspiration to start building terrain in the first place. And since then I've just stumbled across a whole bunch of other good content creators like Dark Matter Workshop, Bill Making Stuff, just to name a few. As you can see there, all those cut marks and gross chip marks. This step is literally about just giving it a more appealing or natural texture. And of course, fixing all your mistakes. Remember those two chips that I accidentally tore off? I just covered them up with spackle. Really easy. Here's past me reminding future me to explain to you what I already explained. Don't worry buddy, I got your back. So 
So here I'm just using my fingers to tap some texture into the spackle because there's a lot of streak marks from spreading it around and this is going to help remove those. It just gives it a more natural aesthetic in my opinion. You could use a sponge or maybe if you think of something else to give it a better texture, go ahead. But keep in mind is that the spackle will dry and probably ruin whatever it is you're using on it. So that's why I use my fingers. Easy to wash. And once you have them finished, they should dry white. Here you can see a half dry one. I rest mine out in the sun. Helps them dry faster. So next you're going to need some Mod Podge. This is going to help seal your crater from the elements. This is going to be a protective layer essentially. I mix mine with black paint so that when I grab my paintbrush and spread it all around, I'm adding a protective layer while also base coating a color at the same time. Generally black is the safest primer to go with, but you could use whatever color you wanted. And look at that, one of my rookie, I just dunked the whole paintbrush in there. Oh, embarrassing. So just make sure you're really thorough here. Just cover the entire crater with this Mod Podge and just leave no pink alive. And halfway through the drying process, you're gonna wanna grow two arms and come back and stipple some texture into those streak marks because it just looks bad and, well, we want our train to look good, right? So once they've started to dry, they should look something like this. So the next step is painting. I like this step, this is fun. So grab your paints, grab your painting tools. In this case, I'm using painting sponges. I bought these at Michael's a while ago and they've just been sitting on the shelf staring at me and, you know, why not, right? Try something new. I used a brush on the original set, so we'll see how these do. I might find a new way to paint that I like. Don't be afraid to try something new. Once again, I'm gonna give credit where due. Um, I recently stumbled across a YouTube channel called Spect. I'll put a link in the description, but, uh, he did some rusting effects and pretty much painted an entire Death Guard tank with just a sponge. Um, and I've never even thought to do that. And that just blew my mind. I always thought Warhammer models were paintbrush and paintbrush only. So I went out and got some sponges and here I am, giving it a go. Better to do it on a terrain feature than entirely ruin a good Warhammer 40k model in my opinion. But essentially what you're gonna wanna do is just do another base coat in whatever color you're trying to match your battle mat with. For instance, my brown craters I did originally, I primed black with Mod Podge, but then I primed again with brown so that when I do my dry brushing, the base coat is darker than the highlights. <laughs> oh yeah, this part's funny. I uh, was being particular about the way my sponges were being arranged and I thought, huh, that gives me an idea. I'm new to this whole filming thing and I've never really done a stop animation before, so I wanted to see if I could piece it together in the editing process and I think I did a pretty good job. So without further ado, watch me lazily stumble through this and I hope it's a fun little detour away from the content. Wow, <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> Seemed a lot cooler when I did it, but. <laughs> oh well, you gotta have fun, right? What's the point if you're not having fun? Good vibes only. 
So the next step is really simple. Just grab your highlight color, in my case it's gray, and just start dry brushing all around the crater. Now once that's done, we come to my absolute favorite part of this terrain project. Playing with rocks. But in order for our rocks to stick, we gotta use some PVA glue. So you wanna cover about 80% of the crater with PVA glue. You definitely don't wanna cover all of it you're gonna to wanna to leave some spots bare. And you'll see why here in a sec. So you can grab your rock material that you've chosen, and then you're just gonna cover the entire model with the rocks, and it should only stick to the parts where you put PVA glue down. So just make sure you beat the devil out of it. Once you've shaken all the excess off, you should be left with something like this. Now I gotta say, I was pretty happy with this first test run. And here we have some of my brother's beautifully painted Death Guard showcasing off what the terrain looks like finished. I gotta say, they complement each other really well. And it's just really awesome to see how it goes from that to that. Like, at this point, I was really excited to finish the other craters because I knew I'd be happy with the end result. And it was well worth the headache smashing all that all rock, rock for two, for two hours, hours. Non stop. Non -stop. Well, besides how to make craters, I hope there's another lesson that can be learned here. I feel like a lot of us crave the outcome we perceive in our mind, and we get scared that things aren't going to turn out the way we want them to. And that's probably the biggest barrier to most people not even trying something in the first place. I know it's mine. We determine we have failed our vision before even trying. But I hope this video and my rambling thoughts have maybe sparked a new creative perception. That thinking about the outcome in our head distracts us from enjoying the process. I know I tried really hard to be mindful of that during this project. I was too worried if this video idea was dumb or if I filmed too much or too little. But that should never be our focus. Just enjoy the moment you're in and don't worry if things don't turn out the way you wanted. As long as you feel like you have achieved 8 out of 10, and you tried your hardest. And that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah. Here's a smiley face for sticking it out and getting to the end of the video. I appreciate ya. See you in the next one.